Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. My mama told me to pick the best one, and it is you. Oh my gosh! Yes! Yes! yes. Okay, I guess I'll say it all. <laughs> we are the world. We are we the are children. children. We are the ones who make me brother. Miney Mo was from like my little cousin one year ago, dude. You you you, you really had to bring that up. So I really was... had to. You don't know me, no. I honestly, I really look up to Keanu Reeves because Keanu Reeves is a very modest man. He doesn't live in a big man. He every actor has money. Like every A lister actor has money, and he is an A lister actor, and I know he has money. But he lives as a very modest man, a modest home, modest car, and he helps a lot of organizations that help. And he, he, I've seen him help on uh, YouTube people himself, and uh, he's just been my role model ever since I was seven. And I actually got to see him on set for happening money with the proportions, but I never built up the courage to go see him. So <laughs> that's honestly such a great uh, that's such a great outlook on things. I I have just started reading a novel called Pay It Forward. That is basically a novel about um, this 12-year-old guy named Trevor who was asked by his teacher to do something that changes the world. And so he decides to go to three random strangers, do something kind for uh, for them, and then tell them to pay it back to three other random people. And eventually this changes the world. Little small acts of kindness and charity can spread. And I think that that's the most important thing. Well, if even if it does, uh, even if you aren't the other person isn't able to show you their gratitude, or if you uh, um, it's still fulfilling in your heart, I believe, because you have helped somebody, you have achieved the goal, and so it's just yeah, and that's so great. And uh, do you believe? Don't cry. Are you crying? Don't cry. Porno Isaac and Brayden both starred in Hollywood's Warner Brothers with Oscar-nominated actress Melissa McCarthy. Brayden and Suborno are gifted in acting and mathematics, respectively. However, what makes Brayden special is his dream of philanthropy. Brayden's dream is to create a world without homelessness and poverty by feeding the poor, while Suborno Isaac's dream is to create a world without terrorism by adding empathy to our curriculum. Today is the second episode in which Suborno will interview Brayden. <laughs> with Matt because my dad used to be a security guard and he would uh, and he would often practice math on the blackboard because he was a mathematics student as well and so I was so fascinated and mesmerized with uh, all the equations that he was uh, showing and how it related to the natural world. Uh, I couldn't understand them, of course. I was still a baby. Uh, I was so fascinated by the uh, array of symbols and ranges and values. And so I wanted to ask you, how did you get into philanthropy? And, and what inspired you? What inspired me to get into philanthropy or helping other people out or helping homeless is when I first noticed it. So I first noticed it when I was around five. And usually when you're not at the age of five, you're just a little toddler waddling around not knowing what's going on in the world. So when I got to the age of five, I realized what was going on in our world. And I was like, there are people that do not have homes. So... Uh, this lady came up and asked us for some spare change, and my mom doesn't carry a lot of change, and we didn't have any. So, uh, we, we went into a subway and bought her and her husband a six inch sub, and that's just, that's just what made me fall in love with philanthropy and helping other people because it made my heart fill with joy. Just that one act of kindness planted a little seed and it just kept growing and growing until finally I have my food truck. Wow. 
That's so inspiring and honest. And I love how, I love how, I love that story. I honestly just cannot describe it. I, I'm not sure about the joy of philanthropy, but I know that it must be huge. Helping other people is honestly such a noble act. And so, second, I wanted to ask you specifically, why feeding the poor? Many people like don't, uh, many people donate to the poor, donate to charity, or make, uh, give better conditions to the poor. So why do you choose to feed them in particular? I choose to feed the homeless because you never know what they're going to do with money. Because some people are honest and they really are truly homeless and need food, but some people can be scammers and they can just get your money and go feed bad habits like drugs or alcohol. So when you're giving them food, you're you're, sec you're honestly securing yourself that they can't do anything to hurt themselves and that you're just helping them. And it's honestly such a such a it's a great responsibility to have and I really just love doing it and I think you should also just give food and don't be so naive to who you give to money to because money is it can hurt you very true some people are legitimate, but some people are also scammers pretending to be homeless, and some, well, some, even though they might be actually homeless, will just misuse the money. They will use their temptations to spend it on drugs, alcohol, tobacco, and that's a very big thing to realize. Just donating doesn't make a big impact. In fact, it may even make a negative impact, because you never know what that person is going to use it for. Money itself, lots of people think as a good thing, but you can also buy many bad things with it. And so, I think that it's a great thing to be uh, feeding people instead of giving them money, because there are a lot of people who are just trying to get your cash and, and get your sympathy, and there are a lot of people who, are, who want, don't want the money for food, they're just pretending, but they actually will need the money for alcohol or, or whatever addiction that they have that they really want to keep up. And so, that's a very important thing to realize. <laughs> Next, I wanted to ask you, what is your view on philanthropy in general? Do you feel like it is the responsibility of some people or the responsibility of all of us? I feel like it is the responsibility of all of us because we can all do a part in this world. It's, it's, it's just the smallest acts can change the entire world. And... I believe that you just give someone an apple that can go so far. Like that can get them through the night to get a job and get money to get a house and stuff like that. Just, I, I feel like it's a very great responsibility for everybody to put forth their time and effort to helping somebody that needs help. I think that even if you don't have that much to spare, you should still donate at least maybe a few cents to charity. Because you never know what just having a bit of an opportunity could do for some people. It could help them get uh, a better life when they're at rock bottom. And so, that's why I think that you have such a noble cause and that's why I'm so honored to be interviewing you over here today. And so, for, um, I wanted to ask you now, what was your experience cooking with, I believe, Bill Murray for 60 Ladies on Little Big Sauce? What was your experience cooking for 60 Ladies? It's sort of like you just got to, I, I mean, it's always been my dream to feed and serve people. So when I actually got to serve some people, it was just so exciting and joy was just rushing through my blood. It was just, I was bouncing off the walls when I got back to my hotel room that night. I was like, I actually did my dream for a day. And it doesn't matter what your dream is, put forth the work, put forth the time, and you'll get there. Wow. That, uh, that's such an inspiring story, honestly. Many of us have dreams, possibly all of us. Some of us don't put in enough effort and I believe not enough work to make that dream happen. I wanted to switch gears from philanthropy and now I want to ask you about acting. So what, what got you into acting? How did you discover your skill? 
It is a very funny story. My parents, one night, were like, let's go to a rodeo. So we went to a rodeo. And it was halftime during, like, the bear racing and stuff. So we went, and it was a kid's dance-off competition. Winner gets 10 bucks. I was in for it. And I honestly wouldn't stop dancing when it ended. And my mom was like, and the clown had to drag me off the stage because it, <laughs> because I wouldn't stop dancing. And I was just showing off in front of these people my dance moves. Of course I didn't win. But <laughs> my mom was like, you know, he really loves to entertain people. And so she signed me up for like a little acting class. And sure enough, I fell in love with acting. And also, I feel like some, the people you hang around with, like your mom, your dad, or even your friends, can help you discover your talents. That's very true. Your, uh, your parents, your friends, your uh, the group you trust, they can help you discover something new, try something new. They can encourage you. That is one of the most important things, to try something new. And that's honestly the philosophy that I follow, too. Because uh, I believe that the best thing to find people's talent is to try, to uh, try everything. Now, I want to ask you, what was your experience with, to, uh, with acting with such great and monumental actors? Like Tom Hanks, who might possibly be the biggest actor of all times. He's also one of my favorite actors because he, he um, his movies just touch me always when he's in them. Like Apollo 13 or Cast Away. Uh, all of those, uh, all of those are so, uh, the drama just makes me so touched, it makes me cry, honestly. And so, and so Tom Hanks is my favorite actor, and so I wanted to ask, was it a humbling experience to be with him on set? It was a very humbling experience, and I think a lot of people are, in, are intimidated by these people because they're big shots. But one thing I have to say is, don't act like they're big shots, don't treat them like big shots. I mean, you can treat them like a big shot. But the, the main thing is be yourself. And they are actually very nice people. Once you get to know them, they are everyday people. They're still the same people that you would normally talk to on a daily basis. Because the first time I met Tom Hanks, he was like, I was like, can I get a picture with you, sir? And he was like, yes, of course. And we just got to talking. And I was like, you know, these people really aren't snooping and stooping low to a very low level. These people are really kind, and I think that some people need to build up the courage as they move along in life. Yeah, that's true. It's so hard. Sometimes it's very hard to stand up to people or challenges, but sometimes, I mean, you have to stand up to it. Try something new. And you, we shouldn't act like these people are big. They're everyday people. And so even Keanu, I, I think that Keanu Reeves honestly doesn't act like much of a big shot either. I, I mean, you're a little big shot yourself, so. I mean, you were on Little Big Shots, too. You're a Little Big Shot, too. I mean, <laughs> I mean, at your age, I was like, who? <laughs> uh, eight? <laughs> Honey, one? <laughs> or two divided by two is 60. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, you could technically say that maybe 120 divided by 2 is 60. So you were right in that aspect. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, I was, uh, I am so honored to be able to talk with you. And now, here comes the last few questions. So first, why, well, okay, why did you name your truck Little Red Wagon? I named my truck Little Red's Wagon because it signifies a lot of things. First, it represents, uh, like, the Little Red Wagon. Like, you pull it, along, pull it along like you would pull it along, and the car pulls it along. Little Red's red hair, I'm little, and I'm also very small for my age. So, Little Red's Wagon. Yes? <laughs> Oh, you're small for your age? I thought four foot seven was like a dwarf for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm like the third from shortest in the entire school, so. Oh, oh, geez. 
And there were certainly some people shorter than me in my middle school. But anyway, yeah. um, uh, now I wanted to ask you, Shakespeare, the English writer guy, who died a long time ago, and so that guy, he once said, the world is a stage, and everybody is a. a, a the world is a giant play, and everybody is an actor. Or however he said it, the uh, the world is show it, and everybody play it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I I didn't study. I didn't study early modern English. Yeah, I'm not too good at English myself. But I I can a- agree with this term at a certain edge, depending on what you bring it to, and I can disagree to this term. So the reason why I agree is that I feel like God put us on this earth, and we each have a role to play. We each have to fulfill a role. And so my role is, I think, is to help the homeless and help them get back up on their feet. Your role is to fly us all to the moon. No, no. <laughs> I know you, I know you can. No, the pressure, the pressure. <laughs> Stop pressuring me to do stuff. But anyway, may I hear the reason why you disagree? I can disagree this because some people would have, could disagree with this because um, they want a unique talent. Like, they want something like basketball which doesn't involve like other people and that's that's a good role to have because you know why it provides entertainment and and also when you do something you love you're way more happier in life so that's why i could disagree but i'm more it's it just depends on what you're talking about really the, the fourth dimensional aliens probably watching us on t- 2021 in season 12 are uh, probably thinking that Shakespeare was right back in 16 whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, finally, I would like to ask you, um, you are a great philanthropist and also a great uh, singer, and so I would wa- I wanted to ask you. This might be incredibly awkward, but um, could you sing "We Are the World" with me? Because I think that it's very important to be able to have so sympathy for others, no matter what race, what gender, what diversity they are, or what race they are, what nationality they are. We are all humans at heart, and so I think that "We Are the World" is a very very important song in the context that not only does it encourage us to help the poor and help each other, but also to recognize each other as human, to recognize each other as one is the same, especially the line, we are saving our own lives. We are all human. We are saving each other. So it was such a great experience being able to talk with you, being able to meet with such a great mind, and hopefully we will be able to meet again, especially because I have a grand piano on the opposite side of this room. Well, thank you for having me on here, and you're such a pleasure to meet. You're so fun. Thank you. All right, I hope to see you soon. Well, I'll see you later. Bye. Happy holidays. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science.